With this video, we start a new massive series on compression and compressors, the biggest and the most comprehensive ever made. All you wanted to know and a lot more. All the types and topologies, differences, models, best off, cheapest, most expensive, when to use them, how to use them for both hardware and plugins. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixbus TV, hope you're having a great day. Before we start this massive series, check the info box down below for my mixing courses, a bunch of special discounts and offer on plugins, and if you want to support the channel, we have t-shirts. In this video, all the different types of compressors finally explained, and I mean all of them, not just FAT, Opto, Varimu, we're going to cover PWM, Diode Bridge, all of them. The characteristics, the main models, and what they're good for. So let's start with VCA compressors. VCA stays for voltage controlled amplifier. The letter A in VCA is amplifier, but it's actually more often an attenuator as it turns down the signal when it's fed a certain voltage. This in simple terms is how the gain reduction happens in VCA compressors. In the pro audio world, the voltage control amplifier is housed in an integrated circuit. This helps with the tunable aspects of the compressor, so attack, release, ratio, etc. And also we're keeping unwanted distortion to a minimum. VCAs are probably the most common types of compressors out there. They're often used for tubas, but also for drums, percussion, synths, and even vocals. They're loved by engineers because they can give you a lot of controls, a wide range of attack and release and ratio. In short, they are workhorses and very versatile. The most popular VCA compressor is, of course, the SSLG compressor, also called quad compressor followed by the DBX-160A. But so many VCA compressor became classic. The Focusrite Red 3, the API 2500, and one of the latest design, my personal favorite for SSL style compressor, the West Audio Dion. There are also some very advanced and high quality and very expensive VCA design like Vertigo VSC3 or the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor. But we will see those in detail in the best and most expensive videos in this series. Opto compressors. Opto is short for optical. Opto compressors are usually a lot slower than the other types. Smooth, warm, natural, gentle, yet capable of very high gain reduction while still sounding great. One very good example when describing how an opto compressor sounds is the water pipe metaphor. Imagine water flows through the pipe and the pipe carries the water where it needs to go. So far, so good. But what if we put a cap with few small holes at the end of that pipe? Or think of a shower head. Yes, the water might trickle through the holes, but the resistance of the water on the other end of the pipe has increased and create builds up. So basically they put the squeeze into the signal that we want to tame. Optos were among the very first purpose design compressor. Relatively simple in their design, these compressor utilizes a photocell and a light source, traditionally a simple light bulb like design, and in some other case, a LED. The general principle is that the incoming signal voltage causes a variation in the intensity in the light source. The intensity in the light source, as received by the photocell, will determine the amount of compression that is applied. What makes it so unique is the response in the photocell to the light source. The design results in a compressor that latches onto the material quickly, initially releases quickly, but tapers off in its release rate as it decays. We call that stomp on the brakes, and I will show you that. I can demonstrate this very quickly on Pro Tools by using one of my favorite plugins, the R Comp. So you see the difference and the unique behavior in the release time is one of the reasons why opto compressors sound so musical and smooth. Optos are a go-to for vocals, as we know, sometimes in combination with FET. Uh, they're great for bass anywhere when you want a natural squeeze for more of a long-term audio event rather than a quick, short audio event like a transient, for example, like a percussive transient. With that said, the LA-2A and 3A became very popular on kicks and snare exactly for their slow-ish attack and program-dependent behavior. Of course, the most popular optocompressor is the LA-2A, but we have new classics like the TubeTel CL1B and cheaper and great sounding options like the Golden Age and so many amazing plugins that we will see in the best optocompressors, both analog and plug-in video. FET compressors. 
Fat compressors are along with VCA the most common design and you will probably find more options for fat compressors than for any other topology. Fast, colored, greedy, aggressive, these are the bad guys. Depending on the components, their action and color can be either punchy and greedy like an 1176 or fuzzy and warm with a vintage vibe like in the case of the drummer 1978. FET is short for Field Effect Transistor. This design came later, relatively speaking. Originally designed to be a much more transient, happy alternative to the very new optical options available when they came onto the scene. Without going into the very technical details of how the transistor operates to control the gain reduction, I'll just say this. This design results in a compression with a unique trademark response and sound as FET compressors tend to offer a highly colored version of compression. They are ideal for anything parallel, great for tracking, FET are usually the go-to choice for drum, bass, aggressive vocals, anything you want front and center. Barry Mu, previously known as Delta Mu compressors. Originally called Delta Mu, the term Vary Mu was trademarked by Mali. Very new style compressors can be looked at one of the OGs of the compression world. A big difference between very new and Optos is that Optos can have tubes in their construction in the circuit, but that is for color. While very Muse uses tubes itself to tame dynamic to control the gain reduction. Using input voltage changes to alter the bias of the tubes, this tend to result in a slow acting, harmonically rich type of compression. While some very new compressors have uh, variable controls for attack and release because of the nature and the tubes used for gain reduction, they tend to have a slow attack anyway. The most famous very new compressor is of course the Holy Grail, the Fairchild. It comes in two flavors, the 670 stereo unit and 660, the mono unit. Weighing in at 75 pounds, packing 20 tubes and 14 transformers, the Fairchild attained mythical status in studios all over the world. This compressor has been known for handling generous amount of gain reduction without artifacts, although in my personal experience and opinion, they are better off when used lightly for 1 to 3 dB of gain reduction. That's my personal taste when using a Varimu. On the mix bus or in mastering, these compressors are more for glue than actual dynamic control, like a VCA. Today there are great replicas of the Fairchild, of course the original is not available anymore, and then we have of course Mali Varimu up there, and the new style level and 176 from Retro are two new classic, but many more that we'll see in the dedicated Varimu video for hardware and plugins. And here are the ones nobody talks about, PWM, Pulse Width Modulator. PWM is an old technology that has been used in vintage compressors, but also in modern devices. Using pulse width modulation, you are able to cleanly control the gain reduction without VCA artifacts. The basic idea is that the audio is energy and in electrical form when you are inside a piece of gear. So if you are using the compressor to reduce gain, you are basically reducing the energy. Explaining how a pulse width modulation circuit works, it's so very boring. Uh, it suffice to say you have to be a rocket science to build one of these. That's why you don't see them often. Dave Hill built the best out there and Dave Hill is an audio mad scientist. So when would you use a PWM compressor? When you don't want to color the sound at all. We said it, VCA compressors are clean, especially compared to very mu and fat, but PWM are way cleaner. And later on in another video, it's gonna be interesting to understand why there are no plug-in emulation of any PWM compressor. Some of the compressors that uses PMW and that we will see in the dedicated video are of course the Crane Song STC-8, the Pi compressor and the Great River PWM 501 in 500 series. Diode bridge compressor, we tested one of the best. I have it right here not long ago. Diode bridge are the most colored of all compressors. They're thick, creamy, big. They add the most color of all the topology. That would make you think they are not so versatile, but in my personal experience, I had two diode bridge, the LTD2 and now the Heritage successor. Everything you pass through them just sound better. 
This is why the old diode bridge was so sought after and why new designs are coming out. They are perfect with their color for the digital era. Used in mixing for everything from vocals, group instruments, uh, and percussive material, now you start to see them in mastering rigs because of that reason. Using a diode to control gain reduction, this component adds a lot of distortion. Uh, so very often in the old design too much, so they had to drop the gain by 40 dB and that was screwing the noise to level ratio. So they were too noisy. That's why for the longest time, you didn't see so many diode compressors, at least new models. But nowadays the design has improved that we are able to build fantastic sounding compressor, very colored, thick, with no noise. Among the best and most famous diode bridge compressors, of course, the Heritage here, that's my choice for me, is the best out there right now. But there are also, of course, the 33609, which is a reissue of the old 2254 by Neve, the new Neve 535 in 500 series, the Buzz Audio, and the Chandler Zeno Limiter. We will see all of these and more in the dedicated diode bridge video. And so this is it for this first video in this massive series about compression and compressors. In the next videos, we will see all the different topologies, all the characteristics, how to use them, specific models, settings, and much more. So stay tuned, keep following the series. Let me know what you think in the comment down below. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.